Toss a coin to your witcher, O oh, Valley of Plenty, O oh, Valley of Plenty, ho oh, ho. Toss a coin to your witcher with his companion Melty. Butter. Hello everyone, my name is Butter Tongsley and welcome back after a long break to Witcher 3 blood and wine and with a special guest made by my amazing friend kale chips ahoy who is now known as cannoli kale on her twitch streams um she made me for my channel a mascot everyone say hello to melty modern ain't he adorable this thing is just amazingly cute like i've been meaning to show him uh, for a little bit, but I keep forgetting with my dumb brain, so you guys can freely send comments. Oh, butter, you idiot, you dummy, you keep forgetting things, blah, 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 blah. But it's happened now. I have my little mascot here, and now he's even shown on my channel. He's going to join me for my adventures in all future videos. And have some writing on here that uh, Kale also written for me. First is my uh, my old intro slogan, fresh from the fridge. And on the back is my name, Butter Togsley. It's me. <laughs> so yeah, we got Melty, Margarine, and me. And we're going to do this. We're going to get into this adventure. <clears throat> and I keep having to wear all these short sleeve shirts because of the humidity and I also just realized I am over encumbered because all the things that I've been gathering from dead bodies <clears throat> so where we last left off we have just confirmed what we're dealing with in this place we're dealing with vampires literal vampires not like the one time seeing a uh, a vampire encounter which was that big monstrous bat thing in one of my past videos these are literal vampires and we just killed one in order to pretty much stop her from butchering all of these innocent people in their little town over here cuz holy crap coming over here there was a lot of people dead and that just creeped the crap out of me so we are heading over here to Pomerin to ask them to take us to the Duchess. And there's a crowd of people over here. Oh! Hi! Wow! So the attack was not that far from where we were. I'm actually amazed. Um, but before I go in there, I'm wondering if I can... Find someone to sell things to. Oh, there is. There's someone over that way. Let's just hope this doesn't take me into a cutscene. Okay, good. I just want to quickly sell some stuff. So I'll be with you guys in just a second. All right, I'm finally all set. It took me a little bit right there to have everything set up. I got myself a new silver sword. I repaired everything. I even upgraded my horse. So Roach is now armored. This is apparently a better saddle as well as a better blinder uh, for my horse. And I also got better saddle bags, so now I can hold a much bigger inventory. So, let us go and see if we can now speak to the Duchess. Need to speak to the Duchess, urgently. All right, you scouts. Stories done. Go find your friends. But the Pomerine, what about the story of the dragon. Tales for another time. But take a good look at the man who stands before you now. This is Geralt of Rivia. The master witcher who lent his valiant hand to the defeat of the giant Gauntlet. Master Richard, is it true what you always trumped villainy? Hmm. Yeah, being ooh, virtuous and uh, kind, in my opinion, it does uh, trump villainy. So, yeah. <sighs> yeah, virtue always wins. But the Black Knight, he's 
Has doubtless arrived at the tourney grounds to watch ha. the battle in the arena. I hurry. We'll be in time to speak with her before the spectacle begins. Lead the way. Who's fighting? Enough guardian gladiators? Close, not quite. As we'll soon see. Who's gonna face it? That's what I wanna know. Oh boy, something tells me something bad's gonna happen when that Shalmar breaks loose. Let's go. We only see the back of it too, and so far it looks like some creepy turtle. I don't know what a Shalmar is, never heard of one in mythologies, but guess we're about to find out. Shiny armor. Like a big bug thing. Okay, not a bug, but it walks around almost like one. Got a bad feeling about this. I think it did that on purpose. Yep, it did. It did that on purpose to break the things off. Oh, this guy is screwed. Yeah, that's what you get for wearing all that armor. Things kind of hard, and it's been a little bit since I. Oh, there we go. I was about to say, how do I target Z? Okay. Dang it, that thing is 
hard to dodge. If it starts to roll again, I have an idea of how I can maybe dodge it. <gasps> Unless it does that. I am glad I'm not over there. Okay, so that can stop it from rolling. Ah. Okay. That thing was hitting me so many times. But we got him, right, Melty? Why not? It is a monster that kills people, so it'd be better if I did it. And his lips was right underneath, right above the trumpets. <laughs> oh, that guy's seen better days. Well, that's too damn to close the eye. Hurt at all. Vivian? Smile is a physical to keep silent. Speech clearly pains you. She watches. Geralt, we must talk. Vivian, you shall talk later in the medic's tent. Geralt, magnificent, breathtaking. Your grace. I knew that to summon you was a brilliant idea. <clears throat> a delighted, rapish to extract it. And I'm truly uh, honored. See to our young hero. Hop, hop. For we must make off with Geralt. We should talk. We had been long awaiting our father. Had nearly lost hope. Then suddenly, that entrance, so spectacular. All I did was hop over of. Fence. Okay. Your place. Shale Mars are dangerous creatures, even to knights in full plate armor. Nonsense. In Toussaint, knights have battled beasts for mere glory since time immemorial. True. Guillaume suffered a few bumps, scars, and bruises, but in return gained eternal glory as he who slew the monster. Mm -hmm. What about the crowd? Say the Shale Mar had vaulted into the stands, would have been a massacre. Get out. Though we value your fortuitous intervention in the arena, we would remind you your services have been repaid, and as shall soon become clear, you will be generously compensated for completing another task altogether. Okay. Your Grace, my contract. I'd like to discuss it. Naturally, but not here. We shall need Bailey. He let the investigation end of your arrival. But whatever could he be? Come, we must find him. Well, I'm not sure where Damien is, but hopefully he's not um, killed by a vampire like many of your other soldiers have been. They got butchered badly. Come alone, or did Viscount Julian accompany you? We 
wish to see Dandelion, Your Grace? Yes. I mean, no. Ugh. Yes. But solely to tell you we regret. Yes, deeply regret rescinding the death sentence we so justly handed down upon him. If we could turn back time, we would make certain he sat in a tower if he could be bothered. No, we would ensure he was broken on the wheel, then drawn, hanged, and quartered. Mm -hmm. Ah, the very man we would entrust with these tasks. Damien de la Tour, captain of my personal guard. Your Grace, Witcher. Hello, greetings. Sorry to have to tell you, but the guardsmen handling the last victim's body. I know already. The creature from the cellar of Corpo Piac. Was it the beast? No. The Bruxa. A kind of vampire. Not the beast, but tied to it in some way. You know this how? Through a careful analysis of the evidence, both on the riverbank and at Corvo Bianco. Do you need to insinuate the investigation thus far has been sloppy? Geralt insinuates nothing of the sort. We must listen to him. Then... Jeez, someone's a bit touchy about their own investigation. It's not our fault that you guys missed out on some evidence. I examined the body of the beast's last victim. Might have found something. Need to analyze it. A quiet place. That's <clears throat> what I can use most right now. And maybe the help of an alchemist or a mage. Also, like to hear all you know about the previous victims. Take it, Sir Delatour is my man for that. Firstly, call me Damien, please. Second. You should know I spoke against some. I've heard much about you. You bring trouble in the thus far hand of always. And we have enough trouble as it is. Yet we are capable of defeating the beast on our own, without an outsider's help. I've no doubt about it. Damien, we settled the matter of the Witcher's employer some time past. Definitively. Since you have broached it nonetheless, let us discuss Geralt's pay. Are the legends true? Do witchers usually demand that which you find at home, yet did not expect? Um, not always, if I recall. Not quite, Your Grace. Law of surprise? It's something we invoke at times, but rarely. Usually we just take gold. Disappointing. This law sounds rather romantic. On the other hand, <coughs> on returning to the palace, we would likely find impatient petitioners or a set of sample fabrics for a new dress. Poor rewards, both. I fear you would not have much use for any of the surprises we are likely to come upon. Thus, we've decided you shall receive the deed to a vineyard, Corvo Bianco, and the sum of corn. You will doubtless consider this added. Title to the vineyard shall be given to you at once. Surely you'll need lodgings while you hunt. The coin, however, will be yours only once you have slain the beast. Lovely, generous gesture, Your Grace. Corvo oh, Bianco. Isn't it the Duchy's temporary morgue? Is it not? The Chancellor is bungled things again, I think. Not to be left unsupervised for one instant. Yet, in its mood, a morgue should present minimal problems to a witcher. What's more, nothing enhances a wine's reputation better than a green legend. Thank you, Your Grace. I accept the contract, of course. But as I said before, I'll need some information. Uh, so I guess we'll ask about the first victim. How did it start? Who was the first victim? Crispy was the first guy. He was famed once for his many glorious tournament victories. Then he grew old sword and took to wine making. Crespi was not loved by the wine merchants. He was ruthless in business and was thought to cheat many a time. He asked us for a dispensation from all court ceremonies. He didn't want it. He could not. Once you've taken the oath of a knight, you remain a knight till death. How did I? Where they find the body? Quite unusual the circumstance. He was at a feast when suddenly one of his fellow feast goers noticed he was missing. The town watch.
Lich found him an hour later, in Bremen, on his hands and knees, propped against the town pillory, his sword hanging from his neck. He had died of wounds inflicted with claws, not a weapon. Blows of great force. So he died suddenly, but the body was on its knees, and there was some other cruise death. So it seems. Alright, I'm back. Sorry about that, like, sudden, uh, swap. Like, skipping straight to this. My, uh, cat got into one of my family members' rooms and they wanted the cat out. So, I'm back now. Let's continue. Second murder. Tell me what you know. In the city, there are certain nooks. No one reasonably ventures the heart of the dark. One black corpse was found in such place. With the first murder, terror gripped the city. Its inhabitants grew well, kept to safe areas. Consequently, news of the second victim came to us from a group of concerned cut persons. Criminals fear the beast? Telling in a way. Yet you excluded the possibility that Ramon died at the hands of these bandits. Do you believe me, Anator? Not hands, but claws killed Ramon to back. The wound was deep. His body was found in bed, dressed in nightshirt and cap, a pillow placed under his head, and his sword replaced by a bed wound. Ramon de Lac, a knight who but a dozen years past was an advisor to our father, the Duke. Someone went to a lot of trouble to make him look ridiculous. Maybe revenge was the motive. It's not out of the question. De Lac had shady dealings with the criminal underworld. But no one ever came forth with concrete proof of any misdoings. So, by the looks of so far the evidence, it's leading towards knights. Older knights who have decided to, like, retire or, like, put away their blades for combat. But the second one, his blade was replaced with a bed warmer. Now, knowing what happened to the first victim, in my opinion, um, another knight who retires would probably not want his sword actually replaced like that in case of something like that attacked him. I mean, if I was a knight, I wouldn't. If I hear a beast killed the first man, I would always keep my blade with me. Even if I'm retired, at least I'll have a weapon for me. Either he did replace it purposely... Or like Geralt brought up, there may have been someone who made him want to look foolish and did this to him on purpose. Like, it's, it's odd to put together, but then again, we are very early in this whole investigation, so until I see more, we're... Probably not going to discover what that is, but that's my hunch so far. Is either he did put away his sword and replaced it, or these shady dealings ended up with him having a lot of people very pissed off and they took away this weapon. And not only that, somehow that is leading to this beast to work with them because there's vampires involved and the vampires are not f idiots or dumb monsters. They are smart. They can walk around and talk like people. So I feel like it's either the guy did put away the weapon or something fishy is going on that someone's kind of working with this creature. Whatever it is. The first two victims were knights, best years behind them. The same could be said of the third. Sir Delacroix was wont to claim that in modern times, knights face new challenges. Enterprise being the latest addition to the chivalry virtues. He made a veritable fortune in the green trade. Palmerin even nicknamed him Sir de la Stitch. Found a coin pouch on his body. Contained florins dating from various times, hailing from different provinces of the Empire. Delacroix loved coin, true, but had no patience for numismatics. Hmm. Lots of similarities between victims. 
how the bodies were found in strange places under extraordinary circumstances. Seems the murderer, whoever or whatever it is, has some meaning to convey. These were honorable men, Fred. We are horrified by the disdain, the disrespect with which they were treated. These were knights of Toussaint. Blast it. Might be the point. From what you say, none was a model of virtue. Have you considered that's what the beast's trying to draw attention to? All the murdered men were knights who swore fealty to the five chivalric virtues. And even if the Knights of Toussaint swear fealty to what virtues exactly? Honor, wisdom, generosity, valor, and compassion. Before I think of what I'm going to say, why those virtues exactly, I actually want to know this now too. Five virtues. Why are they so <clears throat> important to your knights? Strange question. Your grace, forgive me. I'm a foreigner trying to understand another man's customs. You are forgiven. According to legend, the virtues we cultivate were bestowed upon us by the lady of the Mirko Hall. How we truly came to espouse them, none remember. In Tusa, we believe men of low birth should be simple-hearted and obedient. We expect much more, however, of our knights. They are to be soldiers and courtiers, lords and servants. Thus, the need for clear moral guidelines. At the time of his dubbing, the knight vows to demonstrate throughout his life honor, wisdom, generosity, valor, and compassion. Okay, so... This is definitely a major tradition that they are greatly engraved on. Especially when it comes to that Lady of the Lake. But, what Geralt said has a point. The knights that are killed seem to have later on been found out that they do not truly honor those virtues as people would think. Because, even after your time of service... Normally, you would, like, cling on to that, especially if you want to show that you lived that honor in life when it comes to knighthoods. These knights lived that honor, but then as soon as they were done, they completely showed very opposite, like, lifestyles, like, doing misdeeds and questionable actions. Something tells me who or whatever this beast is or the people possibly working with it, they are trying to prove a point. That's what I'm thinking. So I feel like we're dealing with a possible traditionalist that is very pissed to find out that these knights are like not living to their expectations even after service. The beast seems to be pointing out moral decay, denouncing it. The victims were all humiliated. Might have been murdered to emphasize their lack of specific chivalric virtues. Honor compromised by the pillory. Wisdom by ridicule. Generosity by a coin pouch shoved down its throat. It seems to fit true, though not perfectly. Can't discount the theory if it's on the lips of everyone in town. Say our reasoning's right. Next one will be just as showy and denounce the victim's lack of the fourth virtue, valor. We can also assume that victim will be an elder knight. Let's think. At the moment, all the knights are either at the tourney grounds or in the palace gardens. Our annual hare hunts shall begin there shortly. Have you heard of the festival? Elton mentioned something. Seemed excited to prance around in a bunny costume. Not sure why. Hang on. Strange circumstances. A knight advanced in years. The famed cowardice of rabbits. Could it be that simple? Is Milton de Peyrac Peyren the next victim? Milton also knew De La Croix. Told me so down by the river. Damien! Told me something so obvious. De Peyrac Peyren. Crespi, De La Croix, and De Lac formed the knightly team. It was years ago, but... They were a team? They were close friends, <clears throat> tightly knit, and as such, earned the trust of our father, the Duke. We often witnessed him turn to them with delicate matters. Later, their paths diverged. Unlikely to be a coincidence. The beast must know it, too. It's a loop, I'm sure. 
So, this beast is performing murders, each one based off of the five virtues. So that means, not including this, there is a total of two murders, like, literally two, to happen. And this one to be one of them, and I think Geralt is onto something about the the rabbit because of apparently a famed cowardice to rabbits which I've never heard that before but I feel like that's where this is going Your Grace, we need to find Milton immediately Rather problematic You see the garden entertainments are due to start and he's disguised as the hare hiding somewhere waiting for some tipsy courtiers to find him The hare's hiding place is a carefully guarded secret we must call off the game at once. First and foremost, we must remain calm. Dean, order the garden searched immediately. That is quick. By no means can we disrupt the festivities. Panic will only incite the beast to strike soon. You, Richard, follow me. My gardens, my night, I shall take the fall. A murder is out of the question. I will not allow it. Not near my palace. Horses? Ready our horses. Hmm. Oh. Your Grace! <gasps> that was sudden. Oh. She's wearing like regular pants underneath the dress. Never saw that before. Hey, that is silk. Be careful. Give it to me. Why did the camera go onto that guy so suddenly? Is there something special about that guy that we should know about? Also, are we going to start riding? Oh, okay, I guess not. Just go straight into it. Go, go, go. Keep going, keep going. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Good thing my horse is dressed the part. Hurry. We must go to where the game is being held. The participants must find a unicorn's horn, a golden fish, and a phoenix egg. With these in hand, they can deduce where the hare at Milton hides. I mean, we need to find those things too. We've no other option. But time is of the essence, so we shall have to break the rules. Meaning, Witcher senses! Right? I, I hope. Through here. I shall show you where the hunt plays out. Then we will split up. You will get hold of the unicorn horn and the golden fish. I nab the phoenix egg. That will be quickest. Ah. Uh, the unicorn. How do I catch it? This terribly skit is true, but I'm sure you can find a way to earn its trust. Turns around, it's over there. Look. Okay. Golden fish. Do I need a rod or a net? Please, Sigeth. It's not a real fish. Look there. Towards the water. See the lights? The hunters are trying to hook the fish from boats. You must simply dive in and find it. The golden fish and the horn both contain things or clues that will help us find Milton. Once you have fish and horn, 
find me among the other Phoenix encounters. All clear? Then let's get to it. Oh, okay. So, look for the unicorn in clearing. And we have to do something to earn this thing's trust, and... Really, it looks like a regular horse just with a horn strapped to its head. This is a horse with a horn strapped to its head. Or some sweets. We would not be in this predicament, dear sister. Were you still a virgin? Do you really wish to have this conversation again? Here and now? Hush, we will spook the beast. Hey, folks. Gonna have to ruin your fun. Sorry. Who's that? Use the witch says to find a treat for the unicorn. Quest item prepared for use by placing it in an appropriate slot in the inventory panel and select it. Okay, so we got a carrot. Where's the carrot? Oh, we already have it. Am I supposed to just approach it? I think I'm supposed to just walk and approach it slowly. What would you say to a delicious crunchy carrot? Here we go, okay. Just stand still. Let him approach me. Yeah, there you go, okay. Oh wait, better off on horseback. How about this horseback? Faster. This has to be the one. Come on. Oh. What? Hey, wait. Stop. It's important. King Comrade Desire accepts this offering we bring. Pretty cast upon us your merciful eye and bear before <coughs> us its secrets. As the moon is heavenly course, the Christ, 
In my domain, I await that moment of grace when a soul of good or ill repute brings me a gift, fitting tribute. Now I feel bad, but what else are we supposed to do? It's like the queen needs us to do it. Everyone out of my way. Okay. There we go. Please, Your Grace. We do not please. We act out of the highest necessity. It shall be explained later. But it's against the rules. I am the rules. I begin like a groan, hollowed out with ease, then end like a mouse with a head of hard cheese. I feel like it is the palace pantry. Okay, well, even if I got it wrong, at least she did. I never would think the whole thing with, like, grown and all that would mean green. She's not one for being told to wait. That was the beast. Long claws just like the silhouette.
Oh, you're an ugly bugger. Okay, time to fight. Ah! Ah! Oh crap. Okay. Ah! I'm gonna die. Yep, I'm dead. Was I supposed to lose? Yes, Geralt, it's me. Regis? I, you all right? All is well. All's in order. Rules such as these here on Vampire's in moment. But we have not seen one of them in ages, my friend. At least in human terms, that is. How's this even possible? Last I saw you. I was a bubbling, shapeless smear, having been rather spectacularly melted into a column of a castle. In somewhat better shape now, as you can see. Hardly peaked for, mind you, but no I human folk can think me demigod by this. I'm sorry. What happened? It was my fault. I never got a chance to apologize. No need, Geralt. Bygones. I did not have to join you on that <laughs> No one twisted my heart. I'm trying to comprehend what just the hell happened. Apparently I was supposed to lose by the looks of it. And, uh, now this guy's here saying he knows us. I'm guessing he's a character from the past games. I have not played the other one, so I don't know this guy. So I have no idea where this is going. All I know is I, I needed a moment to hold, hold Melty because I'm just completely confused. I suspect we'll get a chance to speak at these in the right place. Now, however, we must deal with the things that we just don't hear. <laughs> Uncle Serial Killer seems to obey you. If you can talk him out of it, convince him to stop murdering. Why do you think that? It should not be easy, as Deadlock can be rather stubborn. Though you must certainly recall that my do a father's son. So that's his name. He's your friend? Though Detlaf is... More beastly. But not to worry. <clears throat> I'm working on it. Haven't exactly done a great job with that. He's killed one night since I got here. At least three others before I arrived. For good reason, I'm sure. Understand, Detlaf is not some decadent shit. For sport, or to assuage a dryness of throat or a dullness of mood. That's why I don't know. What, what reasons does he have? So, in your opinion, what are his reasons? Precisely what I wish to find out. And then I will convince him of the error of his ways. I've got a lot of faith in the guy. Despite appearances to the contrary, you two are quite alike. You both noble hearts, yet you both are wont to conform ignoble deeds. When circumstances force you to force them. Remember the year 964? I'm a 
was three centuries ago. Blind fear gripped Rivia, Lyria, and Spala. Women and children were dying. Their mutilated, dismembered corpses littered the fields. The root of Lyria. Read about it. Chewed up almost 200, then fell to a common poacher, supposedly owned with a dagger blessed by some prophet. It fell to Detlow, who then found a poacher asleep in the brush near his snares and dropped the fiend's corpse at his feet. And thus, the legend was born. Why did he kill a monster? Ow! Vampires rarely help humans. Must have had his own agenda hunting the beast. You were. Uh, he saw it for one reason alone. The monster killed a lad who once in the street had offered death like an apple, expecting nothing in return. Terribly noble of him. You do not have a monopoly on vultures, my friend. Vilgefort melted my body. Deadlock found what was left. As per our codex, he had a choice. To leave me where I was, or to care for me and nurture my remains. He chose the latter, regenerating at no small expense in his own blood. Do you know what that means to a vampire? The gravity of the endeavor? Probably the same thing it means to a human. You owe him your life. How much more than that? The act itself made us blood brethren. A bond so strong humans cannot even imagine. Which is why I know something of the other is up for it. Always have an overdeveloped sense of empathy. Each vampire has a unique talent. One they hone over centuries. It's precisely what renders us so difficult to classify. Dead Love's trump card is his herd instinct. His tribal propensity. In point of fact, he prefers the company of lesser vampires and shuns that of humans. If he walks among you, killing egregiously, only means something's upset him immensely. Hmm. Anything specific? Some set of things that would be likely to set him off? How should I say this? Detlaf doesn't understand men, their work, its rules, its conventions. He's naive, he says. He doesn't comprehend your games, knows not what it means to lie, deceive. <laughs> Suggesting he's maladjusted. Venting his rage. <laughs> Unsuggesting my adjustment can at times be complicated. But is it the case this time? I cannot say. But the intent is. So this guy. Something is making him do this. Like, it could either be his rage or something else. But what it is, I'm not even sure of at this point. Gotta find him before something upsets him even more. Well, we share a course, then. Just like the old days. Not entirely. I mean, when I find him, you know. I know you have a contract on his head. Yet your true task is to stop the beast killing, not necessarily to kill the beast, am I right? All in all, sure. Let us find him. By the time we do, I hope I have convinced you that love is no monster. Fine. All right already. But for now, evidence is stacking up against him. Hear that? The posse. Knights must have tracked me here. I prefer them following me here. I'd make shift quarters at Mela Long Cemetery. We'll be there. See you. That's a pretty cool ability. Holy crap, I'm at an inch of health. Well, I don't know what to do here. All better. <laughs> Alright, so... I'm actually going to have to end off the episode here. So... We met, apparently, an old friend of Geralt's, again. 
like so far that's one of the major things that's like happening in this is we're like meeting old acquaintances or friends or enemies and working with them left and right and this one is a vampire and he's trying to help the beast of uh, Belur which apparently is Daflag or I, I probably said well, I probably horribly butchered that name I'm very sorry about that but some of the names are just very hard for me to pronounce myself but uh, this is where this episode is gonna have to end till the next episode so in the next episode we're going to meet our vampire friend at the cemetery where he has a hold up base there and we're gonna see if we can find more evidence and clues to the reason why this man is killing all of these knights like every single one is being murdered by him so we're going to find out why in the next episode so i'm gonna save here and i am going to end it here so with that being said thank you all so much for watching don't forget to leave a like if you guys enjoyed the video and of course subscribe and ding the bell so that you guys can stay notified of the content that uploads onto my channel and as always i'll see you all in the next video take care everyone and please all of you have a wonderful day bye everyone it's delicious.